Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library and welcome to Bedtime Stories. I've got some fun books for us tonight. We'll have something fun on the flannel board. We'll do some finger plays and songs and we'll finish up with our going to bed book. If you want to leave a comment uh, on our page here, we'll be happy to read it later on. And well, let's get started. Our first book, which one is it, Bernard? It's one that's going to sound a little familiar to you. It's called The Three Billy Goats Fluff. This is a story by Rachel Mortimer with pictures by Liz Pynchon. And it's published by Tiger Tales. Trip, trap, trip, trap. Oh, how is he supposed to sleep? Mr. Troll buried his head in his pillow and groaned. He looked back at the newspaper ad that he had read. It said, Troll Paradise, fine riverside apartment with slimy toads and running beetle juice. Bargain. It sounded wonderful, but how could he have fallen for it? What the advertisement should have said was noisy underneath the only bridge from the Rocky Mountain to the lush green field. Hmm. Now on that mountain next to Mr. Troll's bridge lived one, two, three billy goats and their last name was Fluff. They loved to eat the lush green grass in the field by the bridge. It made their fleeces, that's their fur or their wool, extra fluffy. And that was important to Mother Goat's knitting business. Her sign says, fluffy stuff for sale. Now the three Billy Goats Fluff crossed the bridge twice a day. But this morning, Mr. Troll had a surprise for them. He put up a sign, no trip trapping over my bridge. Trip trappers will be eaten. And it was signed, Mr. Troll. But the little Billy Goat Fluff hadn't learned how to read yet, so he set off as usual. He just put one hoof on the bridge when <gasps> Mr. Troll leaped out. I'm a troll with a very sore head. Stop trip trapping over my bed. When I'm tired and feeling blue, oh, there's nothing quite like little goat stew. Oh, the little billy goat was very scared and he scampered back to mother goat. Well, next came middle-sized billy goat fluff. His hooves were louder than little billy goats and Mr. Troll leaped out again. I'm a troll in a very bad mood. Waking me up is terribly rude. Middle-sized goats make ooh, a lovely roast or a tasty pate upon my toast. Well, middle-sized billy goat raced back to big billy goat and they were both too scared to cross the bridge. We're telling our mom on you, they shouted. Mother goat listened to her billy goats and she thought about Mr. Troll. She knew what it was like to live with little sleep. Oh, little billy goat woke her up every night. So that night, as she sat knitting booties from the finest billy goat fluff, Mother Goat had an idea. Well, the next day, Mr. Troll was waiting for them. I'm a troll who's really cross. It's time to show you I'm the boss. When I'm tired, I need to eat. Goat and fries, mm, my favorite treat. Well, Big Billy Goat trembled as he handed Mr. Troll a present and a note from Mother Goat. Let me read it to you. It says, if you can hear us trip trap by, then you can make three billy goat pie. But if we're quiet as tiny mice, you must stop being grumpy and start being nice. Well, little billy goat fluff was the first to try out mother goat's plan. He shakily put on the hand knitted booties they were so fluffy and bright yellow, his favorite color. Well, slowly, he stepped onto the bridge. Mr. Troll listened from his bedroom. Nothing? Nothing! So middle-sized Billy Goat Fluff was next. 
His hooves were quaking as he put on four exceedingly fluffy booties. Pink, oh, middle-sized billy goat was a real softy. Carefully, he stepped out onto the bridge. Mr. Troll had his ear pressed to the roof. He couldn't hear a thing. Finally, it was big Billy Goat Fluff's turn. His booties had taken most of the night for Mother Goat to knit. And with four large pom-poms on his hooves, big Billy Goat stepped onto the bridge. Mr. Troll strained his ears. Oh, silence at last. How had they done it? Mr. Troll came out from under the bridge and he looked at the three billy goats fluff happily munching the grass in the field. He looked at the present from Mother Goat and he opened it. Inside were the fluffiest earmuffs that he'd ever seen. And they were wrapped inside of one of Mother Goat's special blankets. Dear Mr. Troll, she wrote, we are very sorry for waking you up and we hope this gift helps you have your best sleep ever. And it was signed Mother Goat and the three Billy Goats Fluff. Well, that night, Mr. Troll drank a hot mug of beetle juice. He loved it. And then he read his favorite bedtime story, The Princess and the Troll. And then he put on his big fluffy earmuffs and he cuddled his soft green blanket. And for the first time in his new house, he slept and slept. He dreamed of fluffy clouds and fluffy toads and fluffy beetle juice. And best of all, his new quiet friends. And you know, of course, who they were. The three Billy Goats Fluff. Did you like that? I did. And wasn't Mother Goat smart to figure out what to do? Well, let's do a finger play about some, hmm, some little monkeys who don't want to sleep. Can you get them ready? I've got my five little monkeys and they're jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So hide one away. So four little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, she bumped her head and her mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys, but you know what? I have a story about some monkeys that we're gonna try and count. This is a book by Mac Barnett with illustrations by Kevin Cornell and it's published by Disney Hyperion Books. And it's one that you get to interact with. You get to tell me what to do. You get to boss Mrs. Ferris. Hey kids, time to count the monkeys. It's fun, it's easy. All we have to do is turn the page and count the monkeys. Should we start? <gasps> Yikes! One King Cobra. Oh, he scared off all the monkeys. I'm going to have to turn the page very slowly and very carefully so he doesn't notice us. Can you be very still while I turn the page? <gasps> oh, look! Two mongooses! 
mongooses have chased away that cobra. Or is that two mongoose? I I'm pretty sure it's two mongooses, but let's vote. Raise your hand if you think it's mongooses. Mm-hmm. And now raise your hand if you think it's mongoose. That's interesting. Well, you know what? I think we're going to turn the page. I bet the monkeys will come back now. <gasps> oh, no! Three crocodiles frightened those mongooses. Or mongoose, we never did find out. Oh, I dislike crocodiles, especially those crocodiles. Oh, these crocodiles, oh, we've got to get rid of them. So can you move your hand in a zigzag? And while I turn the page, it'll confuse them. Can you zigzag with your hand back and forth, back and forth? Oh, I never thought I would miss those crocodiles, but these four grizzly bears are even worse. We're never going to count the monkeys. Okay, put your arms up above your head. Can you stretch your arms up? And make a loud roar. Can you bang together some pots or pans or something that might be in front of you? Or maybe slap your knees? I know you have knees. But most important, you know what I have to do. Turn the page. Oh, no! Five bee swarms! Oh, they drove off those bears. Bears like honey, but they don't like to be chased by bees. And bees can smell fear. You're not afraid of them, are you? Hmm. Could you hum a happy tune and smile while I turn the page? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're gone. Now we've got six sweet old beekeepers. Oh, they've shooed off all of those bees. Can you say thank you to them? There's six of them, so we have to say it six times, and then I'll turn the page. These ladies care about manners, you know, so here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, finally, the monkeys can come back. So let's turn the page and count the monkeys. <gasps> oh no, seven wolves sent those old ladies packing. Oh, wolves and grandmas never get along. You know the story about Little Red Riding Hood? Mm -hmm. Well, this is very important. Don't look at the wolves. You could look at me, you could look at the floor, you could look at mom or dad, but don't look at the wolves. Don't look them in the eyes. In fact, cover your eyes and then I'll turn the page. Are they gone? Oh, good. <gasps> Eight lumberjacks, why they took care of those wolves for sure. Thanks guys. Now it's safe for the monkeys. Can you give each lumber back a high five and then I'll turn the page? Let's high five them. So then we can finally count the monkeys. Hmm. Still eight lumberjacks. And they seem to be settling in. Don't they understand we're trying to count the monkeys? Maybe you could tell them to scram. Can you say it even louder? Louder? Oh, good. Now I'll turn the page. Are they gone? Oh no, now there are nine lumberjacks. They invited a friend with pancakes. How are we ever going to get rid of them? Do you have any ideas? Oh, look at that. 10 polka dotted rhinoceroses with bagpipes and ooh, bad breath. That cleared out those lumberjacks. Was that your idea? because it wasn't mine, but they did like the pancakes. Okay, we're finally ready to, oh no, <laughs> it looks like we're out of pages. This is terrible. We made it all the way to the end of the book and there are zero monkeys, no monkeys in this book. And now, we'll never get to count the monkeys. Oh, well. Well, 
Shall we do another finger play? That was kind of tricky, wasn't it? I'm thinking maybe we could do our bubble gum. What do you think? Huh? Can you reach in your pocket and pull out a piece of pretend bubble gum? Remember, if you don't have a real pocket, pretend pockets work fine. Pull it out, take a look at it. If it has a wrapper on it, you want to be sure that you don't eat the wrapper. So unwrap it and throw the wrapper in the trash. My trash is right there. I didn't just throw it on the floor. Please don't you throw it on the floor either. And then pop your gum in your mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. Do you think it's ready? I do. So can you get your other hand and put it out in front of you? I'll count to three and we're gonna spit our gum into our hands. One, two, three, and clap your hand on top. And we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Did you do it? Okay. On stick. Come on back. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Let's throw it in the trash. Well, we did some counting in that story, and I thought we could do one that has, well, a lot of counting in it. Although we're not gonna count one, two, three, four. But this is called The Grand Old Duke of York. It's an old mm, nursery song, I guess you'd call it. It's illustrated by Maureen Rolfe, and there's some extra verses by Bernard Large, and it's published by Whispering Coyote Press. Ow! And guess what? I get to sing it. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 500 men. He marched them in and out of the wood and he marched them in again. Well, some turned to the left and some turned to the right and some marched all around the wood till day turned into night. The grand old Duke of York, his men were half asleep he marched them through a river, but the river was too deep. And some of them did sink, and some of them did swim, and some did firmly shake his hand and bid farewell to him. That means they said goodbye. So the grand old Duke of York had only 20 men. 15 marching through a farm were chased off by a hen. Woo! And two were lost in the barn, 
and two were lost in the sty. And the only soldier who was left ran off and waved bye-bye. So the grand old Duke of York, he found himself alone. He sat right down on top of a drum and there did weep and moan. He threw away his sword, he threw away his gun, and then he wished that all his travels never had begun. Then the grand old Duke of York, he heard a bugle sound. As he buckled on his sword and gun, his heart began to pound. He saw them in rows of five. He saw them in rows of ten. They all lined up in front of him, the Duke's 10,000 men. And there they are, marching off. And we could count them, but I'll take his word for it that they're 10,000. Well, should we do another finger play? Hmm? Let's see if we could do one. Hmm. Do you want to shake? Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, Stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Can you jump, jump, jump your jiggles out? Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake. Shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. That's good. All right, well, let's see what else we've got for us tonight. We seem to have a lost bear. This is called Where Bear, and it's by Sophie Hen. I think she did the pictures too, and it's published by Philomel Books. There was once a bear cub who lived with a little boy. But over time, the bear cub grew and grew and grew and did things that bears do, like eat and swim and roar One day, the boy looked at the bear and realized he was just too big and bearish to be living in a house. I think it's time we found you a new place to live where you can be bearish and big, said the boy. But where, bear? Well, there are bears in the toy shop, said the boy, and the toy shop is great. But the bear said, no. Then where, Bear? Oh, hang on. There are bears at the zoo, said the boy. What about the zoo? Well, there was a giraffe at the zoo and a lion at the zoo. But a bear with a fence around him? No, said Bear. Well, then where, Bear? asked the boy. I've seen bears in the circus, said the boy. What about the circus? No! said the bear. Well, 
than where, Bear? Oh, I know. Bears live in the woods. So what about the woods, Bear? asked the boy. No, said Bear. Well then, where, Bear? asked the boy. Lots of bears live in caves, said the boy. Would you like to live in a cave? No, said the bear. No, 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 no. Well then, where, Bear? said the boy. I think bears live in the jungle, said the boy. What do you think, Bear? No, whispered Bear. Oh, just what I said. Well then, where, Bear? asked the boy. Hmm, said the boy. Bear said nothing. I've got it, said the boy. Some bears live in the Arctic. What about a bear? Oh, snow, said the bear. There, said the boy. And the boy went home. So the bear was happy, and the boy was happy, and they stayed the very best of friends. chit-chattering on the phone all the time. We should go someplace together, like we used to, said the bear. But where, bear? asked the boy. I don't know, but it looks like they might be going someplace where the bear can wear a crazy flowered shirt and a hat. Should we do one more finger play? Hmm. Let's see here. We haven't cooked our hot dogs, have we? So get your pan ready and your five hot dogs. I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, in that last story, they were trying to find a place where Bear would be happy. And this story is kind of the same idea. This is called The Dog Who Cried Wolf. It's by Kiko Casa. And it was published by Puffin Books. Now Mocha was a good dog. He and Michelle loved to be together and life was perfect until one day she read a book about wolves. Look, Mocha, said Michelle, you'd kind of like a wolf. Wow, thought Mocha, I am kind of like a wolf, but look how amazing wolves are. Why, they run around free and they hunt wild animals and they stay up late to howl at the moon. And look at the way I live. Mocha sighed. I'm nothing but a house pet. I feel like a failure, especially when Michelle made him dress up for her tea parties. You know what? He wanted to be a wolf. So the next day, Mocha made up his mind. He snuck out of the house and took off for the mountains. He ran and ran and ran until finally he reached a high mountain top. I'm free, he yelped, free as a wolf. So he ran and he jumped, he danced, he peed wherever he wanted. 
Wow, he exclaimed, the world is mine. Soon Mocha got hungry. No problem, he cried. I'll hunt for my food just like the wolves do. And off he went. But the rabbit outran him. The skunk sprayed him. The beetle pinched him. And even a field mouse made fun of him. And by nightfall, Mocha was miserable. He missed Michelle. I even miss her tea parties, he said. But I can't give up yet. There's just one more thing I have to try. Do you remember what that was that he wanted to do? It's a picture we saw on the cover. He gazed at the guard, golden moon and he howled as loudly as he could. Ow! Just like a wolf. Can you howl like a wolf? And suddenly, something howled back. Ow! Ow! And then again, ow! Mocha froze. Wolves, he cried. Real wolves! Did you see them down there? Yeah. Oh, he turned and raced down the mountain. I want to go home! He panted. I never want to be a wolf again. So he ran and he ran and he ran until finally he reached the house he knew so well. Mocha! Michelle shouted as she dashed out to meet him. You notice there was a sign she put up for him being lost. You're back! Mocha was home again. He and Michelle were, oh, so happy. Life was just perfect until one day she read a book about monkeys. Did he want to be a monkey? No, but Michelle did. <laughs> All right, can you wiggle your fingers? and wiggle your toes? Can you wiggle your shoulders? And how about your nose? Can you wiggle your elbows? And tap your hands on your knees? And stretch your arms up? And guess what? Get ready, please, because it's time for our flannel board story. And this is one that I do a little differently because I'm gonna put all the pieces up at once. You know who that is? That's a tickle monster. A tickle monster. <laughs> hey there, tickle monster. You don't scare me. Why, if I tickle your horns, you won't poke me. And if I tickle your arms, well, you can't catch me. And if I tickle your feet, you can't run after me. If I tickle your teeth, you can't bite me. If I tickle your tummy, well, you can't swallow me. If I tickle your, oh my goodness, what happened to him? And I hadn't even tickled him yet. Let's see here. Let's put that back up there. And he's missing. Where's the other eye? Oh, I see it. It's under my chair. That's what I get for doing this live, right? <laughs> All right. Well, if I tickle your ears, you can't hear me. And if I tickle your nose, you can't smell me. And if I tickle your eyes, you can't see me. And if I tickle your head, you're gone. Goodbye, tickle monster. Whew. Now I can finally go to sleep. But look what I can do with a tickle monster. Let's put that up. And let's see here. Hmm.
Goodbye, Tickle Monster. And if you ever come knocking at my door, I'll tickle you again. All right, well, I think it's time for our last book. You know which one it is. The Going to Bed book by Sandra Boynton, published by Little Simon. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas big and small. With some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. I always wish I had somebody in here to turn the lights off for me, but I'm by myself. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock and rock to sleep. So that's the good night going to bed book by Sandra Boynton. And it's time for me to say good night to you. We'll be back next week with another bedtime story program for you here at Wood Library. And tune in to our YouTube channel and you can catch some of our other programs that are posted there. Thanks for watching and see you later.